Happy Facebook Live time. Happy Thursday. Um, I'm Melissa Kerman with Melissa's Crafting Treehouse. I'm here every Thursday for my weekly Facebook Live at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, and I always have the latest announcements and uh, most often, almost every time, <laughs> a project, something fun to share. And of course, today is no exception, um, something fun. So uh, welcome, Pam. Hi. So glad you're here. Um, we'll allow people to join in. So last week, um, hi Wendy. <laughs> I, um, I talked a little bit about uh, the impact of this whole coronavirus and on me and my family. And so I wanted to just go there again, just for one sec. Um, hi Debbie, welcome. Glad to see people joining in. Um, basically, I am getting better at doing some regular exercise. Yay. <laughs> I talked about that last week and uh, kind of taken my husband's lead. Uh, he, he exercises every morning religiously uh, for about a half an hour. So uh, instead of waiting for him for breakfast, I'm doing some exercise too. So I'm pretty proud of myself. Not really doing a lot, so I'm not that proud, <laughs> but enough, you know. And uh, we've been doing some more walking, walking in the neighborhood. Um, so that's really fun. Went with my uh, daughter and husband today. Now, um, I'm doing two projects today, and there's a, a sentiment in it that just really struck a chord with me, um, and it relates to my family and the importance of family, and I think uh, if um, this current situation has taught me anything, it's, you know, that I'm just, I'm so grateful. Um, I am fortunate to have not, not be affected the way so many people are, and um, I'm especially grateful for my family. I'm spending so much time particularly with my husband and one of my daughters. My other daughter is, doesn't live with us, but, um, uh, and you know, we're just doing good. It's amazing we haven't gotten sick of each other yet. <laughs> Cooking meals together and hanging out and taking walks. Anyway, the sentiment that I'm gonna be using on one of my cards today, um, I see more people joining in. Hi Kathleen, hi Amy, um, hi Sharon. I saw somebody else's name flash by and I can't remember what it is. Um, hi, first person earlier, which is, <laughs> I will of course say hello after the live. Um, anyway, the sentiment is, nothing's better than the wind at your back, the sun on your face, and your family by your side. <laughs> I just love that sentiment. And uh, today we took a walk and I just, you know, it just felt so right. Uh, so I hope you guys are, there are some silver linings um, in all this craziness. Um, you're having good family time and having more crafting time maybe. Um, uh, certainly uh, true for me so that's sort of my little check-in so I do have some announcements before I go into the announcements I want to share a couple of really cute cards that people sent me this week um, I also have one of my customers um, hi Robin hi Erica <laughs> who um, shared an article with me sort of on the on the lost art of writing letters and it is true that throughout all this I've been sending a lot more cards than I usually do and of course that's a you know a, I'm, I'm, it's a good thing. I should be <laughs> sending lots of cards, but I'm also getting cards from other people and that's really, really lovely. I love to get them. So um, I want to share a card with you that was sent to me by uh, uh, Julia. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to say her name, her last name correct, Osuna. Um, I don't know if she'll be here, but she made this card and sent it to me. It was a little thank you card and uh, it has a fun little opening. So it has a little... Um, insert that comes out and she wrote a sweet note and then it also has a little uh, easel on the back because it doesn't have a full front of course um, she put a little easel on the back so it can stand up isn't that pretty this is gorgeous paper um, what is that called pressed petals and then she even decorated the envelope the back of the envelope has uh, decoration on it so yay yay Julia thank you so much for uh, for sending that to me and then Barbara who is often here joining us um, she sent a lovely card um, and done with the pigment sprinkles and with those, um, what is it called? I forget the names of those dyes, darn it. <laughs> anyway, just beautiful card. Um, and she even put her note on a post-it so, uh, so that I could use the card, which is really sweet. I can't imagine, I, I don't know, how can I even send this to somebody? That's not gonna happen. <laughs> anyway, it's so pretty. So thank you, Barbara, for sending that. I really, really appreciate it. All right, so just the announcements for the day. Um, there are new items on the clearance rack, so go check it out. They're always really you know, deep discounts on anything that shows up there, and there's a lot of new things, but they only 
um, are available while supplies last. So definitely check it out. Um, the other big news, I sent a, a second newsletter today. I always send them on Wednesday, but I sent another one today because um, today there some new news came in that was really uh, time sensitive. Um, and that is, it's, uh, there's been several products that have been unorderable for about two months. And it's been driving me crazy because they're the most popular products probably in the entire uh, mini catalog and people keep wanting them and I can't uh, per, you know, order it for them and they can't order it. So it's been really frustrating. So those are now available uh, starting, uh, well, I don't know when it started, but they are today. Thanks to Christy. Christy's there. Yay. Thank you for, for joining us, Christy. And thank you for uh, giving me the heads up on those uh, new items. I've been watching the inventory list, um, but she's quicker than me. So <laughs> thank you, Christy. Um, so anyway, some of the items that are available that weren't, Grace's Garden Bundle, uh, the Peaceful Moments Bundle, I'm, I think I'm remembering all these right, the Honey Bee Bundle and the Bonanza Buddies Bundle. And for all four of those, it was really the dyes that were the limiting factor because I think they were coming from China. Um, and they were supposed to start you know, being available starting the 20th of April, but it's sooner, so I'm very happy about that. Um, and part of why I wanted to send that quick email today was because you know, there's a pent up desire for these items. So if you really want them, don't delay getting them, get them right away. Whoever you're ordering through, through yourself, if you're a demonstrator or somebody else, um, or through me, of course, um, if you order through me uh, and your order is less than 150, make sure to use the hostess code and then you'll get free card kits from me. Um, so uh, I can thank you for, uh, for your order. And of course you can take loyalty leaves as well if you order through me. So, um, that's probably the biggest news. Um, some stuff that's coming down the pike that I want to make sure you're aware of is the retiring products list from the, for the annual catalog and the mini catalog um, comes out next Wednesday the 22nd. Um, and the items that are on that retiring list, some of them are available only while supplies last. So I want to give you a heads up so you can be watching for it. Um, and also the retiring 2018-2020 in colors um, are always on that list. They're consumables and so they are almost, they're always while supplies last. Um, they're not guaranteed through the end of the catalog sales period, which is June 2nd. So if you have any of the 2018, 2020 colors you want, cardstock, ink, reinkers, markers, uh, designer paper, there's buttons um, in those colors. They're awesome colors. Um, I think I shared my in color bookmark a couple weeks ago. I can grab it again, I'll show you guys. Keep these handy. So there's the in colors. So the blueberry bushel, um, I always forget the name of that. Call me Clover, Pineapple Punch, Grapefruit Grove, and Lovely Lipstick. So um, anyway, those are going away. So I always tell people order it before, they, before the retired list comes out because then they are gone like in seconds. So um, don't delay. Um, okay, let's see what else. Um, for demonstrators, you guys may know that we get to pre-order uh, starting May 5th, so that's right around the corner as well. Um, but if you're considering buying the starter kit and you join um, before or after the 5th, uh, if you join before the 5th, when the 5th comes, you'll be able to pre-order from the new annual catalog. Um, and for the whatever we're eligible to pre-order as demonstrators. Um, and if you order after May 5th and you, you know, right then, then you can actually include pre-order items in your starter kit. So um, just a couple little heads up to make sure you're aware of that. Um, last but not least, you guys know I've been promoting my faux glazed ceramic technique class. That's um, my April class. And I have uh, had you know, lots of pre-orders for that. Um, I did cut four extra kits, so if anybody's out there interested, um, I hate to turn people away if they're interested in the class. Um, you can do the class in electronic form only, or you can do it with a kit, and with a kit, of course, it just makes it so much easier because um, I've pre-cut everything and actually die-cut everything for you. So um, just uh, let me know if you're interested in that. All right, so moving right along. So today's projects, um, are using two techniques that are what I call must-know techniques. One of them is um, 
uh, a technique that doesn't require, it doesn't even use stamps. <laughs> just use ink, uses ink. Um, I have five techniques that I consider my must know beginner basic techniques because they don't use anything but stamps and ink and paper. Um, and in this case, it's just ink and that's the direct to paper techniques. So I'm gonna show you that on the projects we're doing today and a couple of variations. And then the second technique is emboss resist, which uh, if you've been around a while, you probably know what that is, but you can create all kinds of beautiful effects with emboss resists. And so I've got two variations, two project variations to share with you today. So, um, and then quickly, let's see for the first project, we're using Country Road, um, which is a set I've had in my collection for a while and barely used. So I'm excited to be using this one. And then um, the other project uses the Forever Blossom set just did a class for this. I have a couple of class kits left of that if you're interested. And then I used a sentiment in the Peaceful Moments set, which is actually part of that Peaceful, Peaceful Moments bundle that is now available and wasn't before. So without further ado, I'm gonna turn the camera facing down and we'll get started with the projects. Here we go. Oh, John. <laughs> Whoops, that was my little extra light. Uh, hanging from my phone that just fell, but nothing got damaged, so no worries. Hi, Kay. Good to see you. It's been a long time since you've been able to join in, I think. I haven't noticed your, um, your presence here, so welcome. And hi, I see Cindy has joined. Hi, Cindy. All righty. So... Here's where we're gonna get started. Now I've done, gotten a jump start on these things because um, just to, to expedite things a little bit. So on this piece here, I've used my favorite image in the Country Road set, which is this um, grass, the grass as I'm calling it. And I've stamped it with Versamark and then heat embossed with white embossing powder. Now I don't know if you can tell, but this afternoon as I was hanging out, I had some apples. <laughs> I'm on my desk and I got a drop of water gosh darn it on this little piece so we'll see if it turns out I do have a finished product so um, uh, I'll get to show you a better version but maybe we'll be able to hide that little boo-boo of mine uh, in the process of my creating so I've already done my um, heat embossing on this now I'm gonna I'm gonna rewind just for a second because I want to show you uh, the direct to, to paper technique and some variations before I go into the details of that first project. Um, oh, three weeks in Hawaii, that sounds like so much fun. I thought that's what I remembered. Oh no, and then three weeks of bronchitis, no fun. <laughs> so sorry to hear that, Kay. But uh, hopefully you're better now. All right, so this is what we're gonna start with. And yes, I did disappear for a second because I realized I was missing something. So now the direct to paper technique, super simple. And one of the reasons why I love it is just like I said, because all you're using is ink and paper. So I have my soft sea foam um, ink here and a piece of the soft sea foam cardstock. Now this is the, this is the background piece I'm gonna actually use on my project, but it's essentially just rubbing the ink against the paper. Now. This, I just added ink to this, so it's really dark. <laughs> Probably darker than I'm gonna want, so I'm gonna actually do it on the other side. But you can see, you get all kinds of texture on there. And if you want it to look more, if you wanna do something different, you can actually make it look like wood. So this is um, suede. And you can more hold it at an angle, hold your ink pad at an angle, and sort of try to create like streaky lines so that you're getting sort of a look of wood. So you can see it's so straightforward, right? And then if you wanna do something, you know, even more different, right? You can use, uh, say, just use the angle, use it at an angle and sort of create a, a strange pattern in there. So direct to paper is just one of those things where you can do all kinds of fun, maybe kooky variations, um, but you add some texture and dimension to your background. And so I just really love it. So now on my piece here, that's probably more than I'm gonna want. So I'm gonna turn it over 
try to get a little bit of a lighter touch. I did just ink it, so um, that's why it's getting so dark. But So I'm going to be really light in my touch. Now, I use this direct paper technique um, for my black ice technique. I do it with Versamark on um, the foil papers, and for... Uh, when I when I do that technique, I have to have a really light touch. So you're barely touching the paper. So let's see if I can do that with this because, of course, I have so much ink on there that it's going to be hard to get a light touch. And I'm managing to do it. Now I want to catch a little bit at the top because I just like that look. And then I'm going to do it so that I get that little bit of a catch on the other side as well. So that's a little bit more subtle than this. And when I get to the point of assembling my card, I will, you know, pick which one I like better. And um, it just has so much more depth than just, you know, the plain, having the plain paper there. So that's part of why I really like it. Okay, so now, of course, my, my surface is all inky, but that's what it's supposed to be, right? Because we're playing here. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to start doing some sponging now. Some time back, you know, I, I sponge a lot, and um, some people have brought to my attention some other fun options for how to sponge. So usually, I use my little round sponges. I cut them in six, and I put a little label on them. And a while back, when I was just exploring, I decided that I would buy some of these fun little sponge applicators. Um, that have a handle, right? So my hands have no ink on them <laughs> uh, for a change. So doing this kind of project, typically, I'd have ink all over my hands. Um, now, I'm not doing it because I really care that I don't have ink on my hands, but it is really nice to have this handle. Now, these um, come, they, they Velcro on. Just going to show you, right? So you can take them off and wash them and then put new ones on or you can have one for each color, however you want to do it. But um, these were just kind of fun to play with. So I'm starting with my balmy blue. Actually, I think I'm going to start with the soft sea foam instead. So I've got a little handle for each one just to make it easier. Now this has a lot of ink on it, so I have to be careful because it's not how I'm doing it. I was doing it earlier. So I'm going to ink it up on the corner of my ink pad. And I'm doing that because I don't want to have this round shape with ink on it, or that round shape. So I'm trying to sort of strategically ink my sponge so that it's just on the inside, and then I'm gonna start off the page and just start inking up my, around my grasses. Now, if you compare this to using a sponge this way, you end up getting, and you might not be able to tell it on there, but if you, if I had it, it's a lot more texture with the sponge. So you can see it's, and with the handled thing, because you can go off the page, you can get more of a, more gradations of color and less texture. So, I'm going with the shape of my grass. I don't want too much ink on my sponge because I'm trying to control where I put it. Now it's also just just to make sure in case I get ink on the edges I'm actually holding that sponge at an angle so that this side is not actually touching the paper when I'm inking it up. I'm sorry, when I'm rubbing it against the paper. So there's my starting place. Now I am going to use this image, and of course I use Versamark at first, but it's uh, clean now. And I'm going to add some of the grasses in between just to give me some variations in the look of my grass. So now if you're not familiar with the emboss resist technique, the essential idea is that whatever 
is a, is a heat embossed, the ink will not uh, absorb into it, so it resists that surface. Um, and by doing some that's heat embossed in the white and some in the green, you get the sort of images in the foreground and the background to give it a lot of dimension. So I'm going to do a little bit more sponging. And then I'm going to come in with my balmy blue. Doing the same thing along the edge. I'm going to test out my color, make sure it's not too bright. And then I'm going to come in with my color from the top corner, creating my sky. I like how I can do these sort of circular motions to blend the color. And I like to leave, leave a little bit of sort of lighter space between where the two colors meet up. So comment if you have um, ever used, oh, I'm so glad you love it already, Kay. So nice to hear. Comment if you have a sponge preference, if you've ever used these and what you think of them or if you haven't used them and you have a commentary based upon what I'm showing you, I can do that too. So I'm just going to come in just a little bit into that white space to get a little bit of pale blue. Okay. A little bit more green. I like to really emphasize how the dark, get a little bit of darker color, the bottom for the green and the top with the blue so that I get this nice darker edge or framing. So I'm pretty much done with my sponging there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in with my little wagon wheel, my early espresso. Now I'm gonna stamp this off so that it's not too bold next to this very soft imagery and colors. So I'm stamping that off. And then I'm just gonna do it right there in the corner. Because I stamped it off, it's nice and, you know, not too bright. Now, here comes the resist idea. Oh, I see oh, oval makeup brushes. Do those work well? <laughs> Let us know. So um, I've just wet my paper towel just a little bit. And what I'm going to do first is actually press down on here because the ink is sitting on the surface. And if I rub, it might actually rub some of the brown um, ink onto the paper. So. I'm trying to just remove that excess so that it looks like the wagon wheel is in the background. And that's one of the really fun aspects of doing the embossed resist, just because it's resisted the ink and so you're just getting it in the background, which I think is really fun. Okay, last but not least, I'm going to stamp my sentiment. And this is the one that the sentiment, nothing's better than the wind at your back, the sun on your face, and your family by your side. Such a great little sentiment. So I'm using some jet black stays on because I'm using some black layering on this. And I'm just going to test, eyeball the straightness factor. This is going to go in the upper right hand corner. Hopefully I'll get that straight. Pretty close to straight. <laughs> okay. And then I'm just gonna layer things up and so that you don't have to watch me do all the last little bits and pieces. 
This is my finished project. So I've just attached my focal piece to a layer of black and then, um, oh, you use those hand, the handle sponges a lot. Great. Um, all right, cool. Good to know. Thank you, Kathleen. <laughs> um, so you can see they come out a little bit different each time. So because I had re-inked my, my green and my blue, they came out darker on this version than on this one. Um, so I've attached this to a piece of black and then I've attached the whole thing with dimensionals. Now I did also um, do this direct to paper technique in the background. So it just goes like that. And then of course on a black base. Now I did make this card to open up this way. Haven't put an inside in yet. Um, might be nice to put some of the grass on the inside to go with it. All right, so that's project number one. Now project number two is a different color scheme and different images as I mentioned earlier. So for this one, I'm using Highland Heather and Balmy Blue and I'm gonna use my little handled sponges again. I'm gonna fold this over because it's just distracting to see all that ink on there. Now for this one, I have, again, I've heat embossed my image and it is, grab the image, you can see it there. I've heat embossed that twice in um, uh, white embossing powder. So I came in like this for the first image and then from the top for the second one. And then I'm gonna do some sponging again on this one. Now, like I said, I'm doing a combination of this blue and purple. Now the idea is kind of that the flowers would be purple, the sky would be blue, and then in some places I blended the colors as well. Now I have a couple of different variations of this one. I'm just gonna do this part quickly. And I kinda want it lighter than I had it last time anyways, so just. And again, I'm doing that angled inking on the corner there. Get an ink on the corner of my ink pad, but you know, what the heck, that's what it's for. <laughs> now, one of the fun things about this that I like is that when I overlap the blue and the purple, they kind of create a different color, which is always fun. Now I didn't re-ink this Highland Heather. You can see um, it allows me to kind of work it a little bit more and blend it without having to worry about getting too much color. So there's something to be said for having an ink pad that's not super juicy. I'm going to come in with some of my blue. I want some spots that are a mix so you can see right there if that's a combination of the blue and the purple and it's uh, it just looks a little bit different than the pure blue or the pure purple which I think is really fun. So the more I work over the heat embossed images the more that white heat embossing really <clears throat> shows up. You get more contrast, which is fun. All right. I think I'm gonna stop there with that one and just show you a couple of other variations that I've done. So now, 
Etsy. So now for this one, I did put a sentiment on it and I'm gonna use this with deepest sympathy. This one is from let's see, Poppy Moments. I think that's what it's called. No, Peaceful Moments. <laughs> Peaceful Moments. This has great sentiments in it. I've used this more than lots of things just because it's so versatile that way. And um, I find that this, um, yeah, I always need the occasional sympathy card and I don't have a lot of them. So I think this, um, these flowers are really nice for that. So there we go with that. Now, <clears throat> I've done something else on my final version and I'm just going to show you and talk you guys through it. So, um, well, actually, I could do it on this one. Okay, I take it back. <laughs> okay, so this is another version, right, that's sponged. I've done a couple of additional things. So I inked up my image with the Highland Heather, and I stamped that on the side. And, of course, that just gets me some additional dimension. And then I've also, right here, and I'm going to take this one step further, I've heat embossed this with clear embossing powder. I don't know if you can see the shine in there, but it's gonna show up when I do a little bit more sponging. So that's what I'm gonna do now, just to show you how we get yet another level of dimension. So really it's three levels here on this one. So I'm coming in with my blue. And I actually did that heat embossing with the clear after I did my first layer of sponging. So, what that does is it makes the, the image a little bit blue in behind, and it's a lighter blue than uh, what's over the top because I'm making it darker over the top. So you can see I kind of got a little, little round edge there, so I'm gonna have to work that out. So I have some of the clear heat embossing down here and then some more at the top. So you can see how it's showing up as I add the additional ink. And I'm gonna do some of the purple, Highland Heather. So now the last step I'm going to do on this to make sure that the color, that it's really going to show up is I'm going to wet my paper towel and just go over the surface and make sure there's no additional ink on those images. So now you can see I've got the one I did before. This one's got three layers of images, the stamped heat embossed in white, heat embossed in clear, and then my finished card here, sort of in between, because I've got, I don't have the dark purple stamped on this one, so you guys can see, so it should really be in this order, like that. Now, I did something that I have to stop doing, <laughs> and you're gonna know why in just a second. I stamped on both sides of this one. I'm thinking, let's just try another one on the back side. This was actually my first one, so it's more like that. And now I have to choose between the front and the back, which I just hate. <laughs> um, so that's, that's kind of my hard part. So this one has all three, um, layers of ink. In fact, I even stamped off some of the Highland Heather on this one. Um, so this, these two are more alike than any of the others, but there's my three gradations or levels of sponging. So just one, one set of images, heat embossed in white and sponged. This one, I've got the clear heat embossing and then sponged over that next step. And this one, I've got the Highland Heather stamped and the clear heat embossed and the white heat embossed. So there's all my different versions. So 
And then of course I've also, on my blue, my uh, balmy blue, I've done the the step of. So now you guys have to tell me what do you, what is your favorite? <laughs> simple, or I should say, complex, simple, simpler. <laughs> tell me which one you like, and uh, I have to decide which one I'm going to commit to. It's so annoying. Now this one, if I use this one, I decided that this sentiment would look really lovely right in there. I think that may be the one I'm partial to, but you guys can let me know what you think. So I will have these cards on my website tomorrow. I'll finish them and my blog post so you guys can see them all, and there will be dimensions as well. Um, and uh, that is pretty much it. I do want to just say goodbye, turn the camera around. So there's my, there are my other cards, my versions for you guys to check out. Are you guys telling me what you think? Look at your comments. The second one, you like the middle one? Was that the, is that the one I turned over? <laughs> that one, is that one you mean, Sharon? You like all three, yay, the middle one. <laughs> oh boy, it's gonna be hard for me to unfollow. Let's see, yeah. So really there are four. There's the back side and then the front side. This is one, two, three, four. <laughs> now I'm going to really confuse you. Anyway, I am so excited that I got to use this uh, this country road stamp set finally once and for all. Just uh, especially like I love that image. So so happy I was able to play with some new stuff. Okay, I'm going to turn me around. always should turn it before you see me. <laughs> I just feel like I'm on top of the camera. Okay, there we go. Front side. Okay, I'm going to have to be watch reading all your comments. Um, anyway, this was super fun. I'm, I'm sure many of you have already heard of embossed resist technique um, and direct to paper. Um, uh, but for some reason, it always looks different, um, and that's part of why I love it. I love sponging. It's just so much fun. So I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. All righty. So just recap on the reminders, I guess. Um, uh, the clearance rack, don't forget to check it out if you want some great deals. Um, watch for the retiring list next Wednesday, the 22nd. And make sure to get those 2018, 2020 in color products if you don't already have um, the things that you want. Um, consider the starter kit if you want to pre order from the new annual catalog, which is going live uh, June 3rd. It will go live to customers, so that's super fun. And uh, again, I have four extra kits for my faux glazed ceramic technique class. Um, there are details on my website under the uh, technique classes available now page. Um, you can see sneak peeks of um, the projects that we're doing. And uh, incidentally, those um, project kits went out to all the people who have pre-ordered them yesterday. There's um, three people who I'm waiting on a few things on, but the rest of them have been put in the mail already. So um, expect to get some happy mail soon, so have you. And then I've also already mailed um, uh, all the stuff except for those three people <laughs> for my quarterly um, sales goal special offer and uh, I got so much stuff in the mail yesterday just crazy my daughter went to the post office with me and helped me get it all in because it was a lot of stuff so yay <laughs> um, lots of people getting getting happy mail which uh, I love Merry Christmas <laughs> early um, all right, so I will be back next Thursday, same time, same channel, April 23rd. Um, that is 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for more fun projects. Um, and make sure to check out my blog post tomorrow with these projects if you want to see still photographs of all the different versions assembled. Um, and you can leave a comment there if it wasn't clear which ones uh, you were commenting on telling me was your favorites today. <laughs> So um, anyway, thank you so much for joining me today and I look forward to seeing you next week and seeing your comments um, and uh, on the website or on this Facebook Live and I will, um, 
I will go back and check in on the comments um, and say hello to you uh, after the live. Have a great evening, people. Happy crafting.